Welcome to Ask Dr. Taylor in the DMs. Personally, I really enjoy idioms. At lunch, when one person left the table in a huff, another commented, Jekyll and Hyde personality. Those of you who have read The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson know one meaning. An individual can exhibit one type of behavior and a short time later act entirely different. Part of nurturing relationships involves consistently exhibiting behaviors that others can trust. It's time to join Asian Grant, part of our team. I can trust them to consistently collect and share questions from the World Wide Web. That's a good feeling. What's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Taylor in the DMs. As you can see, I'm here in the editing bay once again because this is where I be. This is where I be when we're in Ask Dr. Taylor in the DMs. And today I am looking for stock footage on the brain and the heart, which I'm sure you can also see. But I'm gonna take a break from this and we're gonna go through some of the questions that we've been getting from our community for this new episode of Ask Dr. Taylor in the DMs. So let's dive on in. The first one is from Sven in Sweden. That almost gave me a tongue twister. And Sven in Sweden wants to know, I do not understand recommendations to limit television viewing for toddlers. The first three years of a child's life are critical for brain development. Recommendations are that there be no television during ages one and two although computer educational programming may be helpful. At age three, there is evidence that the right type of preschool TV for up to two hours per day can be beneficial. One study found that watching non-educational programs at age three was linked with attentional problems at age four to five. And another study found that just nine minutes of watching fast-paced cartoons had an immediate negative effect on a four-year-old child's executive function, such as an ability to defer gratification. On the other hand, children who watched an educational cartoon or engaged in drawing for nine minutes did not show this negative effect. We have another question from Anonymous, but they are from the Caribbean. It says Southern Caribbean to be exact. So Anonymous in Southern Caribbean wants to know, why do you say that reading aloud for 10 minutes a day is stimulating to the brain? Huh? And I wonder like, also are there different types of reading aloud? If I'm scrolling on Instagram and I'm reading a caption aloud and that takes me 10 minutes, I wonder if that's like the same thing but you're probably talking about books. So let's see what Dr. Taylor has to say about reading a book aloud for 10 minutes. Well, let me tell you. When you read aloud, you must first recognize the words. That's one aspect of reading. And also remember how to pronounce the words. You use your tongue and teeth to form the words. You engage your vocal cords to articulate the words aloud, which also requires your lungs and breathing to provide sounds. Because of this, studies have shown that reading aloud for 10 minutes a day provides challenging mental stimulation for your brain. It's also considered an anti-aging strategy. That's the reason I do it. We have another question from Anonymous. And I just wanna say, you don't have to be anonymous if you don't wanna be anonymous. A lot of people do send us anonymous questions. And I think a little bit is because some people are scared to ask questions. But for future reference, you do not always have to be anonymous, but if you so choose, then we will oblige. Anyway, question number three from Anonymous says, what role does the brain play in regulating emotions? This is an amazing question because sometimes I feel like my emotions are out of control. 
And sometimes I feel like it's because of my brain, but sometimes my emotions are just so strong that it doesn't even feel like I'm having a cognitive like response to my feelings. Anyway, enough about me. Let's see what Dr. Taylor has to say. Ultimately, the brain regulates everything. Although all parts of the brain work together, think of it as having three connecting layers. For example, imagine your wrist as the first or reptilian layer, part of the subconscious mind. Your fist represents the second or mammalian layer, also part of the subconscious mind. Place your right hand over your left fist to represent the cortex or third brain layer, part of which houses consciousness. Some believe that the regulation of emotions involves the prefrontal cortex located directly behind the forehead, directing the mammalian brain where emotional impulses are thought to arise. One level of emotional intelligence skills likely also plays a part. All right, so a lot of these people watch TV because we have another TV-based question. The first question was, why limit television viewing for toddlers? The fourth question is, oh, from Western Australia, from Jack, and it says, can watching a lot of TV negatively impact the brains of toddlers as well as adults? Several studies have explored this very question. One study reported that each additional hour of television viewing during middle age increased a risk for developing Alzheimer's disease by 1.3 times. Another study compared baseline cognitive ability against that of five years later. More television viewing time was linked with worse cognitive function across all cognitive tests. Computer use was associated with better cognitive function at baseline and a lower likelihood of cognitive decline over the five-year study. Those who watched more than four hours of TV per day were 24% more likely to develop dementia. Those who used computers interactively, not passively streaming, more than one hour a day as a leisure activity were 15% less likely to develop dementia. Quite the study. Cassandra in Haiti wants to know, how does stress affect brain function? Mm, I think this is a really interesting question. I want to say that millennials are probably one of the most stressed out generations. It partly depends on the type of stress and how long the stress lasts. Studies have shown that chronic exposure to stress is associated with reduced volume of the hippocampus, the brain search engine, and the modulation of size in both the amygdala and the frontal cortex, which in turn can interfere with memory, processing of memory, and emotional regulation. Studies have also shown the adverse childhood experiences, ACE studies, can set the brain up for an increased vulnerability to stress in adulthood. This question is from Sean from Trinidad, and Sean wants to know, how do brain injuries such as concussions impact long-term brain function and cognitive abilities? I'm originally from Trinidad, but I moved to the United States when I was young, and I started playing football from middle school all the way till college, and I got a concussion or two. It's starting to feel like, this is a whole story, I love this, it's starting to feel like my cognitive abilities are becoming affected. All right, so... That's a very interesting question, Sean. I'm sorry that that's happening to you. Unfortunately, a traumatic brain injury can negatively impact brain function and cognition, depending on the severity, the part of the brain that's impacted, and the speed and availability of state-of-the-art medical care. 
along with the potential ability of the injured person to participate in recovery activities. Some brain injuries occur after birth due to trauma. Other brain injuries are due to internal causes such as strokes, aneurysms, and tumors. There are also mild, moderate, and severe levels of brain injuries that will impact the level of potential disabilities. And that wraps it up for another episode of Ask Dr. Taylor in the DMs. Thank you to everybody from our worldwide community who sent us questions. We really appreciate it. We love seeing where you guys are from, the Netherlands, South Africa, this and that, and all these places. We love it. So keep sending us in your questions. Hopefully everything Dr. Taylor had to say answered every single one of your burning questions. And not only that, but inspired more. Keep them coming. Our DMs are always open. All right. Thank you, Asia and Grant. And thank you to the worldwide online community for sharing your brain questions. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Until next time, remember Confucius says, consistency is an art that builds lovely lifetime friendships. <laughs>